right, all right. Here. It's your boy, Claymore Rain. It's the ATP Compact. It's a combat media show. We talk about all things combat related. We're talking about this fight game. Thank you guys for showing up. Giving me an opportunity to show out. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoy the content, if you hate the content, speak on it. How you guys doing today? Oh, I don't know what episode this is. What four or five? I don't know what this is. What episode this is? But um, um, hope you guys are blessed. Hope everything is working out for you guys, and God's working it all for you in your favor. Um, thanks for showing up to hang out with me for a little while. Um, we can dump, jump into some um, some some topics. Um, uh, today's topic, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, just a quick, you know, little opinion. You know what I mean on Shakur Stevens. A lot of news going on right now with Shakur, and a lot of news, believe it or not, going on with somebody who probably needs to be talked out, talked about a lot more. And that's Mr. Jerron Boots Ennis. Mr. Boots himself from out of Philadelphia. This young bull is making noise. He's been making noise for a long time. And really, you know, I've spoken about how he has come in a time was like just bad timing for him, right? Because really he should be in the same conversation as your Terrence Crawford's, your Errol Spence's, uh, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter's. He's supposed to be in that conversation. Um, he's the new wave. Um, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of things are going on in that welterweight division. He's just almost having to sit back on the sideline and just kind of wait for these things to kind of wait for the smoke to clear a little bit so he can um, put his name in the game where it's supposed to be, where it's supposed to be, which is at the top of the game right now. Um, but as – uh, as of late, we all understand that Showtime is out of the boxing business. They've decided they're no longer going to be involved in that business anymore. And unfortunately, uh, Joran was definitely signed to Showtime. Definitely, definitely, definitely signed to Showtime. That is not the way, uh, you know, he didn't, I'm sure he didn't plan on it coming out the way it is now as far as Showtime uh, canceling their their uh, their interest, right? In, in the boxing sport. So I guess at this point, Mr. Ennis should be a free agent, right? I don't know what he's working on in, on the, in the backgrounds with Showtime, what he's going on, but rumor has it, rumor has it, there's some, there's some rumor out there saying that there are conversations that may be happening in the background in reference to uh, TMT and Premier, um, Premier Championship Boxing. Right. Um, it's just rumors. We don't know what's going on. Right. Because I'll tell you who didn't say it. Boots didn't say it. <laughs> right. So and the same thing. It's just Shakur Stevenson is also dealing with a contract that will be coming to an end in the coming year. And he's made it clear on multiple different interviews that he is not the kind of person who's just going to be loyal to to the soil as far as top rank is concerned. He's definitely looking to put himself in whatever the best position is whatever position is going to be best for his career. And as he should, as a fan of boxing and wanting to see him in a match in certain matches, um, he definitely should. He should de he definitely do whatever is going to, um, whatever is going to facilitate that um, yellow brick road to those fights. That's what he should be considering. And he's made it clear that he is. So as you guys know, PBC is quite possibly the top promotion they probably have the most champions they probably have the most champions um in the uh in the sport of boxing right now and the fights that he's trying to get and the fights that he needs to have um they 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 stay over there by by the pbc and you know, conversations are happening in the background about him potentially uh, being interested in, in in doing some business. He, as you guys also know, well, if you don't know, now you're about to find out that he has been, been he's being mentored as well um, by Floyd Mayweather. He has been being mentored by Floyd Mayweather as well as Terrence Bird Crawford. And, you know, he gives a lot of respect to Andre Ward. So he has a lot of smart people that he's been speaking with and getting some good advice from. And it's not far-fetched to potentially see Shakur Stevenson and Jerron Boots Ennis and maybe a couple other fighters, who know, 
right? But specifically those two, um, possibly crossing lanes and joining um, and, and hiring, or however you want to look at it, a uh, promotional company like TMT or Premier or the PBC. Um, I think that's interesting. So this fight coming up on November 16th for uh, Mr. Shakur Stevenson is a very important fight. Um, November 16th, uh, Shakur Stevenson is going to be fighting for the vacant WBC title. He'll be fighting against Edwin um, De Los Santos. Um, a fighter, a puncher from out of Dominican Republic. Big fight. I think it's, it, it has uh, the chance to be one of his biggest tests. Um, a huge puncher, southpaw. Um, Shakur is also um, a southpaw. So being able to, to, to see him in, in a situation like that presents an opportunity for him to show some more uh, tools that are in his bag that maybe he hasn't had to show before. And also, you know, Looking towards the future, I think we all kind of have an idea of seeing him in the ring with a Shakur, um, excuse me, with a um, Javante Tank Davis or uh, Devin the Dream Haney, um, fights like that. And, and other ones are, are out there as well that, that's possible. I mean, you got Richard Hitchinson out there. You still got Frank Martin, even though, you know what I mean? Frank Martin did a, you know what I mean? Frank Martin definitely did a, you know, but yeah, you know what I mean? Still out there. Um, fights like that. And Shakur needs that fight right now that's going to really show um, that he's that guy in the 135 pound division, being that he just recently in the past year came up from 130 pounds to that 135 pound division. So he's looking for that right fight. And it's not easy for a fighter of his caliber who brings the issues that he brings to the ring for any fighter that wants to fight him um, to get a fight because what fighter is really trying to put um, their career up against that. I'm sure if they can get anything else, they'll jump in the lane of anything else first. So this fight is huge for him. Him holding that WBC title gives him some leverage in that division and, and puts him in a conversation where, you know, the, 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 the key to the city might be in Shakur Stevenson's pocket and if you want to get in the city and be that person as far as straps are concerned he's going to be in that conversation so big important fight coming up for him in november 16th we'll see how that turns out um i'm sure him winning that also makes him a lot more attractive for other promotional companies being that this year he'll be ending one contract and um reason it's reasonable to say he'll be starting a new one even if he is I'm going to go back with top rank. Let's say he does go back with top rank. Him having that WBC title and getting that attention on him just you know allows him more leverage at the table of negotiating how the future with him in top rank or any promotion or company is going to look like. So um, ear to the street, that's what we're hearing. We're hearing that there's a potential um, merger. Maybe conversations are happening. Um also remembering that Terrence Bud Crawford, uh, Shakur Stevens's, um, uh quote unquote big brother that Shakur has confirmed. That's how, how he looks at him, and Terrence has confirmed he looks him looks at him like a little brother. Is also right now over at PBC. So you know Shakur has a lot of um, a lot of reasons to go on that side of the fence. Top rank is just not getting Bob Arum in them, or just not getting their fighters like Shakur the fights that they need. And, you know, that's the politics of boxing. Um, is Bob Arum an evil dude? I don't know him to call him an evil dude. But at the end of the day, if the people that are um, in control of the fights that that his fighters want to get at and they don't want to do business with him, in turn not want to do business with the fighters because of him, then, you know, he stands to lose some fighters. And that's just a unfortunate but quite real truth about the situation and where it's at. But let me know what you guys are hearing. You know, uh, let me know if you're hearing anything out there. That's what what, what, what I'm hearing um, in the background of potential things that might be happening. But uh, on that note, you know, I'm going to let you guys go. You guys, please like, subscribe, comment. Tell me what you think. Dislike, whatever, <laughs> whatever you feel like doing. Uh, put it in the comment. It's your boy Claymore Rain, and it is the ATP. Combat Media Show. And we out.